welcome back to another Corona Geek here where we talk all about mobile app development using Corona SDK. I'm your host for today, Charles McKeever, and I'm joined by a, a panel of incredibly intelligent developers. Uh, joining us today is uh, Mo Binoff. Mo is the developer of Space yeah. Missile Command, Space Command, Asteroid <laughs> Space Missile Command. <laughs> <laughs> all of those are a, they're they're all a thumb tingling space shooter game that combines the best of asteroids and missile command gameplay. I wrote that myself. And uh, there, basically, if you're a gunner aboard a, a starship, or if you want to be a gunner aboard a starship, you can be charged with protecting the newly discovered planets from giant asteroids. So we're going to have a conversation with with Mo today about his game, his app, and how he. It came to be, and, and some of the things that, that he's uh, experienced along the way during his development. Uh, also joining us is uh, Thomas Kalinko. From, he's actually joining us today from California, but he's normally in uh, Poland, and he is the lead developer of App Codes, the App Store optimization toolbox where you can perform App Store SEO, track your competitors, check out popular keywords, and dispense your apps promo codes effectively. So hello, Thomas. Hey. Yeah, I, I did it. Did you? Are you proud of me? <laughs> you did it. I did, you did it. <laughs> I, I said all the words correctly. Bravo. <laughs> also joining us is Ed Marina, and Ed is the owner of Roaming Gamer LLC, where he develops libraries, templates, and other products for use with the Corona SDK or our Corona SDK. So hey, hey, Ed, how you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. And lastly, joining us, or maybe not lastly, here comes somebody oh. else. Uh, is uh, Matthew Chapman. Matthew is a Corona Ambassador, certified Corona developer, and owner of Origin Technologies Inc. It's, that's a mobile development company based in Orlando, Florida. And Origin Technologies was, has <coughs> released the world's most successful and highest pass rate bar exam course apps ever. <laughs> I threw in the ever. <laughs> you, you're proud. <laughs> And also just joining us is Gerald Bailey, Corona Ambassador and President of Snakehead Software, a mobile game studio in the Austin area. So, hey, Gerald, thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we successfully made it through the introductions without me slaughtering anybody's company name. So let's move on to announcements <laughs> before, <Yeah. laughs> quickly. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys noticed, but last week, Major Magnet was chosen editor's choice as the num and it was the number three in the Apple App Store uh, paid apps last week. So that was yeah. pretty exciting. Uh, those guys have uh, their apps have been out. Their game has been out for what like a week, and uh, it got picked up by Apple and featured. And so that's that's what we all strive for. And so kudos to them for that. Uh, also, Plant Pot. Uh, the guys over there, Ian Masters, uh, Corona Ambassador, those guys, they've got Finger Hula, which was featured by the Google Play Store, or is actually being featured by the Google Play Store. So that's that's good stuff. I like to see uh, things featured. And, of course, last week, um, Mo's app, Space Command, was featured as App of the Week for on the Corona website. So that's, that's always cool to see those things come up and be promoted and highlighted at all that hard work being uh, shared. So uh, one of the things you need to know about is that Corona Paper issue number three is out. So if you haven't had a chance to go check that out, you want to go to coronapaper.com and look at it, uh, purchase it, and download it. I actually have it downloaded here as a PDF. I've got it, I've got it uh, in my Dropbox folder, uh, actually on my iPad mini so that I can take it with me and read it anywhere I go. So if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about the Corona Geek show, uh, there's actually an interview there. Uh, Corona Geek is being featured in this month's issue. And you can also pick up the previous issues. There's issue one and two. There's three so far. Uh, the first one had a 20-minute, uh, or actually had an interview with uh, Walter Liu. And the second one had an interview with Corona Ambassador David Rulin, which is really, really good. So definitely go check those out. There's lots of code samples in those uh, in those issues and lots of interesting articles and things like that. So if you're looking for more Corona SD con Corona SDK content, um, that's a good resource. So before we get into our geek speak, I want you to know that uh, there is one blog post. Well, there's a lot of blog posts over at the Corona Labs, Labs blog, but there's one blog post in particular you're probably going to be interested in uh, that was put up last week. It's the new widget 
uh, New Widgets Part 2 blog post. Uh, there's Part 1, which is linked to from the Part 2 blog post. Uh, but this goes through and it's a tutorial that shows you how to implement or how to use some of the new widgets and things like that. So you definitely want to go check that out. Um, and be sure to check out part one as, as well because it's a good read uh, and will definitely help you out with your widgets. So that didn't take very long. Let's go ahead and get into Geek Speak. And so we've got Mo here. Mo's going to tell us all about layered games. So Mo. How long has Layered Games been around? How many people are involved? You know, and how did you get started? Oh, okay. <laughs> the uh, game itself has uh, been around since uh, uh, December 19, 2012. That was when the first time he showed up on the App Store. And but the actual development took forever. Uh, at least according to my wife. Uh, <laughs> but basically, the whole thing took about a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. Um, of course, obviously, because this is not a full-time job, I have a I have an actual real job, and so those things was done in weekends and evenings, like everybody else almost here. Um, it started in I believe in May of 2010. That was another SDK uh, for about six months. I play around with that SDK for about six months. And then I found out that it was not really made for uh, for what I wanted to do. Basically, uh, I was I was it was missing the um, the the particle engine, like uh, particle candy type uh, modules. So it, it it took a while for me to switch to uh, an F. Eventually, found Corona okay. at the end of 2010. So. Uh, it took a long time okay. to, to make it to make it work. Well, that sounds like uh, when people I, I was I was not born in Texas, but I've been in, in Texas all of my life. And so when people ask me where I'm from, I, I always say, "Well, uh, I wasn't born here, but I got here as soon as I could." So yeah, it, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the app didn't start out with Corona, but but it got there as soon as it could. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So where did it you? Was a, it was a, 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 go ahead. Oh, I was gonna, oh, I'm sorry. So, where? How did you pick your game concept? Uh, by accident. It was mostly with uh, when I was when I learned a new SDK. I always wanted to try to put together something that uh, a quick, a two-year-old quick app, and um, and I found out that maybe a, a space. I was I was always interested about space, so I wanted to. Uh, to make a space game. Okay. Uh, eventually, I found out that I didn't know about asteroids and I didn't know about missile command before I started this game. And eventually, someone told me, hey, it looks like this combination of both, of both of these things. So that's what I came up with the, uh, with the concept. And then it was supposed, like I said, it was supposed to be just for testing, for playing around. And then eventually, it went so far, so hard, so long that it became the apps that I released. Okay. Uh, but I should say that uh, that was not my first app. Uh, uh, back in 2005, which is a long time ago, I started uh, doing apps for the Palm OS, the Trio phone, the Palm Pilots, and so on. And I released about five apps at that time. Basically, almost those five apps took me two years to make. <laughs> so there's a pattern somewhere here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it took me a long time. And the first one I did was a Lunar Lander. And Lunar Lander Simulator was a, a very uh, hardcore simulator for the Palm OS. And I mean, we're talking about everything that you need to know about NASA was, was included in that, uh, in that OS, I mean, in that app. And that app also took two years. So it is a. A pattern there. Yeah. So, what what do you think is? And this is. I mean, this is. I, I didn't send you this question in advance, but uh, mm. so pardon me for kind of throwing a wrench in the conversation. But uh, do you think it's better or or worse to to try to put everything into an app like that, or should should you just get something out there as quickly as possible and then try to build on it, or should you try to throw in everything in the kitchen sink? You should wait for my blog post on Corona. <laughs> yeah, about, that, about that two-year process. And uh, the answer is no, ship now. <laughs> uh, that's, that's my uh, answer to you. Never, ever 
put everything on that on that uh, on that first app. Of course, I did it three times, so I know about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you you you've, so I'm, you've... I'm, I'm I'm wrote that blog post and I'm going to send it to Ina so you know what I'm talking about. Okay. But, yeah. So, yeah. so you so you've uh you have confirmed the the concept. Don't don't do Absolutely. it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the App Store. So did you uh, back, back in Palm OS time? You had only about 50k apps on that app store, and you could sell your app between fifteen dollars and forty-five dollars. Basically, a lot of people were there was no one dollar type uh, price points, so that was okay. But not now is what eight hundred thousand apps and hundreds of hundreds every day coming out. You cannot afford to do this kind of things where you can spend that much time on a, on a, on an app. You you know that's funny that you say that because uh, you I don't know if anybody remembers Handango I think it's I think it's still around but but it used to be kind of this I mean it was the app store before there was an app store and uh, I I developed apps and published on Handango uh, and so it, it, it's kind of funny to see Apple App Store and Google Play and all these things kind of pop up and be so wildly successful. But then there's all this history where it, it was already it was almost ahead of its time, I guess. I don't know. Uh, back when smartphones weren't all that smart, I guess. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did uh, release uh, the venture game on Andango and also on Palm Gear. If I don't know if you remember that. Um, and even so, that at that time, the, those app stores was taking like 50 or even 60 percent of your. If you remember, they were taking a lot of money from uh, from you. Right. But, since with the, the apps was costing fifteen dollars, it was still okay. Yeah, and you really were you really were allowed to set your price according to what you thought it was worth. Uh, at least I, I, it was my experience, and uh, and so you could uh, uh, experiment. Uh, w so that's that's kind of a, an interesting dynamic to today's world, where uh, you know you, you can't really deviate too far from ninety nine cents without either somebody you know revolting or, or something. I guess because they're all sitting, you know, somebody somebody had said that it's kind of like a, a, if you went into a physical retail establishment and all the products were sitting right next to each other, um, you know, and in, in, uh, you'd be able to, I mean, you could you could adjust the price, but here, I don't know, it's like you you really can't you can't adjust the price, you can't really go up or up or down too much. Is that do you think that's true? Yeah, it is. It is hard. Um, it's almost like if you if you charge one ninety nine. People who have to take a second mortgage to buy that app, so it's really hard. I, I tried it at one point. I didn't didn't last too long. I, I switched it back to about two days later. But uh, it, it is unless you have a really really hot uh, app and also having hundred thousand dollars before that to you know promote it and buy ads or whatever. Uh, it's almost uh, impossible. It seems like that almost needs to become a. a I want to say union, but almost like a uh, an association of developers who come together. They all agree to at the same time to bump their price, and then at the same time like cross promote each other and kind of help each other make up for any kind of negative well, feedback. I, I think it may depend on the market actually, because uh, aside from app codes, uh, I did a couple of iPhone applications as an independent developer and. And actually, I had applications that sold and still sell for like four dollars uh, a piece. So, so it really depends on the market. And it's funny because you can see actually a different kind of people buying applications for four dollars, four dollars compared to to one dollar or two two dollar applications. So, so I must a little bit disagree with you guys on on this thing. We don't need necessarily a, the union to to dictate the prices. <laughs> Uh, but it really depends on the uh, on the market. Uh, for example, the, the apps for lawyers or, or medical apps, we can see the higher prices over there with no problems, right? Yeah. As for the games, well, we know how the market is, right? So if you're if you're like the AAA best best with with millions of dollars to spare on the budget, then then you charge a lot. But if you have a small funny app that that will just you know yeah uh, deliver. <laughs> no, I, I I definitely agree. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said even in the for the AAA type uh, studios, uh, you notice that the some of them charge six, seven dollars or ten dollars for the app, right? Mm -hmm. But some of them 
charge 99 cents for the app, or even free, uh, like Angry Bird. It's it's a great app, blah blah blah. But they charge 99 cents because they can they know they can make millions of dollars later on. But so, but you're right. I think the market is always right, <laughs> and basically you have to deal with that. Uh, I, I was just hoping that maybe the App Store would have like uh, goes out with the inflation. So at least we get maybe three <laughs> percent of the year, ninety nine cents with dollar one and so on. But didn't work out. It doesn't seem to work like that that way. Yeah, they actually increased prices in Europe a couple a couple of months ago. So you know, slightly. <laughs> oh. Yeah, like 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 ten percent, I think, to adjust for the oh, euro <laughs> dollar price. Not too bad. Yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> yeah, it's enough for me. What, what do you, why do you think they in, in, uh, inflate or increase the price? I, if I remember correctly, it was because of the dollar euro price. You know, the the, the 0.79 euros is no longer as much as it okay. used to be, or whatever. I, I don't remember correctly if that was the reason or, or the, some some other some other reasons. But actually, in Europe, people pay more for apps, slightly more right now than, than they used a, a year ago. So you know, we were waiting for for the tire one to become like two dollars <laughs> or three dollars sort of thing. For for that would be nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you can always you can always force the price to uh, to higher price and and not get any download. But <laughs> yeah, we could we could go on strike. You know what? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, so that, yeah. And I'm not I don't really look look for a, a group to be in control of pricing or or to set pricing. But it seems like if all the if everybody's at ninety nine cents, then uh, then if somebody raises their prices, then it's, then somebody's going to going to lower their prices to ninety nine cents. And it's like if everybody just Uniformly said, okay, look, we're, we're none of us are going to charge any less than five bucks. Then you could artificially move the price. I don't know. Somehow it's got to happen. I mean, right now, if you go pay for a console game, you're going to pay fifty, sixty bucks. And yeah, I, but, and and, then, and there's this there's this divergence where the two two are kind of coming together. Yeah, but the problem with that is that, um, and you remember the the time in the Palm Palm OS store. Where people can charge anything they want, fifteen dollars, whatever. I think what the Apple did was to make the app price a non-issue. Oh yeah. By making it ninety-nine cents, so people can go quickly and push a button and get the ninety-nine cents. And you'd see that how many, how long it takes for people to think about it. Right. So imagine if you put it five dollars. Well, it's uh, a, it's an impulse by uh, yeah, decision. Yeah. yeah. That's a that's the I think that's the switch that that happened. Uh, and that's why I think the app store is so big. If they had left it at five dollars or fifteen dollars, there's no way you get one million apps on the app store right now because it would not be a market for it. Yeah, the other the other problem though is you've got um, like Angry Birds is the example we're using. You've got Angry Birds at ninety nine cents in the app store, but then it's free on Google Play because no one wants to pay for anything over there. Well, that's the issue with that market, right? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Apple didn't dictate that market on iOS. The developers did. It's the developers' own fault. They're the ones that created the race to the bottom. Yeah. So you can't really blame Apple for that. Apple just puts the pricing out there. It's the developers who kept trying to undercut each other to make a buck that caused the problem. And now we're stuck with it. Um, yeah. Those developers aren't typically around. It's us guys that still have successful businesses that are still around. Flying Aces, I just, uh, in February, uh, I did an experiment with Flying Aces because of an article that my new senior vice president uh, read about how uh, you can accelerate your apps back up to the top of the, of the food chain. And I took my app that was a $4 app, made it 99 cents for two weeks, and I saw absolutely no difference in revenue. It was the same amount of money. It was just a difference in downloads. Yeah, and you had that in a, uh, in a in any business arena. You know, you can charge, let's say, for websites, you can charge a hundred bucks for a website, or you can s charge ten thousand bucks. You know, uh, you can, in in this in the year, let's say you make the same amount of money, everything being equal, but but. You're uh, you're working a lot less at the ten thousand dollar end, you know. So you yes, you'll get less business, but you need less business because you 
make up for it, a dollar figure. So it, it, so it depends, I think, uh, on the market again, because in some cases, if I was a game developer, I would actually prefer to have like uh, 10,000 people get my game for one dollar than, uh, than like a quarter of it for four dollars because, you know, 10,000 users that, you know, if I bring in a purchase or if I want to have some marketing plot, then, you know, 10,000 10, users is, is quite all right. But you know, when you're doing website or you're doing services, then uh, then it's totally the the, ex the exact opposite, right? You you would like fewer users paying more usually. Yeah. So you're yeah you're, yeah yeah because you in that to that point you're talking about uh, distribution being able to. Uh, yeah. So I'm talking about you know if if the cost of user support is nil and that's that's the case usually in in case of games, then you perhaps want as many users as possible paying as little as possible. Uh, assuming that that the profits are the same, right? So right. the case you mentioned. So so Mo, I see that Space Command's only in the Apple App Store. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Actually, it's kind of funny um, you ask because the app the app itself uh, was tested first on Android because at that time, uh, two years ago, uh, I had the an Android device. I had a Droid number one, and so it worked fine on the Android at that time. And then the Droid died. And I had to switch to the uh, to the iPhone, but um, really a, an issue of time. Okay. Uh, do you have any, has to. Do you have any plan? Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, absolutely. I, I wanted to to try to. Uh, uh, even so, my wife is saying next. Uh, I need. I wanted. I want to try to put it on the Android. Um, the main thing about the Android is the this problem of uh, of having thousands of uh, devices. To try with, so I'm thinking maybe probably do, just do the um, uh, the Amazon uh, Kindle Fire, and so I try to limit my uh, testing uh, uh, to one or two device. Uh, but definitely yes, I will. I think the best the best part of it about Corona is to be able to 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 make it on on different devices. Yeah, too. yeah. I think that's a, I was, the Kindle Fire yeah. angle th uh, is very smart. I think Amazon's doing a much better job of selling. Android than than Google is, uh, at least at least from a monetary perspective for the developers. Yeah, I think that's what someone told me uh, that people on on Android itself do not really want to pay anything. But I think in the in the mar in the candle fire market and maybe also in the milk market, they they are used to pay nine dollars for a book or something like that, and it's more commercial. I mean, it's more. Uh, People are more used to pay these kind of things. Yeah, well, and, and, and it's already tied to your account, so you know it's it's almost again that whole impulse buy. It's it's uh there's really the barrier the frick there's really very little friction to the purchasing process. Yeah. And all the fact is also that I'm also using uh, uh, a free. I also have a free version with uh, with Webmod. Um, in that case, the more download the best for, for me. So okay. may as well. Increase the, uh, the number of apps, a uh, number of uh, apps stored. Okay. Well, did you use any? Let me ask you. Let's move on to the to some other areas here. Did you use any special <coughs> tools or animation packages? I know you had mentioned Particle Candy. Oh, definitely, Particle Candy was uh, critical to uh, Space Command effect, as you see in the, the game. Um, I also used uh, libraries uh, that were actually generously provided by uh, Glitch Games. Okay. So. Uh, as soon as I finish the game, or finish, it's a big word, but when I was done with the game, I trying to figure out, hey, I'm missing some uh, social part, like Twitter and Facebook and so on. And thank God for those uh, libraries, because it took me like two days to integrate that to the system. If I had to do myself, it probably would take another year or two before the game would together. In five years, it's a lot of time. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I did that, used that. Um, what else I used on the system? Uh, memory profiler was a very good help to find all these leaks because once the game was done, there was a huge amount of leaks because I had no idea really how to delete all the objects I was putting on the screen. And so memory profiler was a very good, uh, good, good module to have. Was uh, that the one from my developer? Yes, exactly. I'm also using their um, their uh, network now, package. Uh, I'm sorry. The network package. No, um, um, I'm using their uh, 
editor, not editor, but the uh, I think Glua or Gluey. I don't remember the name now. Yeah, it used to be called Cider. Yes, that's right. So I'm using that for to to develop the the app. Um, yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Okay. Is there so? Is there anything uh, that you'd like to add to the game? Anything you feel like is missing? <laughs> A lot of things. <laughs> I mean, basically, the game was released before it was finished. Oh, really? So, it, it feels yeah. it feels very finished. Yeah, it is. It is finished in certain view, but um, I wanted to add like aliens to come down and take over the planets and, and stuff like that. So uh, probably, maybe, depending if. Uh, my wife will not divorce me. I will be able to continue uh, that part, but we'll see what happens. I'm actually working on another game right now. Okay. Okay. Well, good. We'll yeah. look forward to that one too. So, Absolutely. so you, uh, I, I like your trailer that you have, your 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 video trailer that you have for the the game. So, where did you get that created? Oh, definitely by myself. <laughs> really? Uh, That's awesome. It was uh, actually a pretty easy process using uh, iMovie. Which has all this the, the the transition and the music and so on. So all I had to do is uh, patch those uh, screen capture on the, from the simulator on the Mac, and uh, have some some graphics, and that was it. Well, I tell you what, you should go into uh, uh, promo trailer business, business game business. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's a, because it's yeah, the tools are out there to put these things together and 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 all that, but. Uh, it, the trailer to me had a little bit of an emotional appeal to it. It had a sense of drama. It had, you know, it had all those storytelling bits that makes the game seem interesting enough for me to go check it out and, and spend yeah, 99 cents. Yeah, it gets, because that's the it, uh, the video, on that video. The, yeah, the game, the the promo trailer. Um, uh, you know, it's like it's like writing an article. A headline, the the image on the on the article, the headline, all those types of things are really just trying to get me to read that first sentence and it seems like that game trailer you know that's just trying to get me to at least go check the app out and I think you did a really good job on it uh, so seriously you should <laughs> you should <laughs> offer up those services or maybe charge people for it I mean the, the, the whole concept was the fact that most of the games like that uh, had to do with destruction of the of earth by asteroids all the movies talked about that my concept was mostly to show that earth was already destroyed by asteroids and then people were travel, were surviving, found planets, and they started terraforming those planets, and blah blah blah. And so, uh, and then of course the history history is about to repeat itself in that game. So that was the whole concept of the video. Okay. But thank you, <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, let's uh, let's move on into app codes <laughs> and talk about that, and uh, and then Mo, I want you to share your uh, app store optimization story with us somewhere. Throughout the conversation, okay. Absolutely. Okay, so so Thomas, you you've got uh, you're the lead developer there at App Codes, and uh, so tell us about App Codes and, and how it helps app developers. All right, so I will start with the story, uh, with, with my personal story, how how we start uh, got started with App Codes. So I was an independent developer, and and I launched a couple of titles, just like Mo said, lots of work, and 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 then what happened was, all right, I was full of hope, and you know I put them out in the store, and as most of us know the story, well they didn't sell at all, right? It's uh, I didn't handle the marketing well, so it took me half a year to a year before I learned how to promote the applications. And well, mostly what I did was was through through the app store optimization. So, you know, if you, when you have that phone, uh, uh, you look at the store. There is the featured list. There is the app store genius list, and obviously there is app store search list, right? So, so what we started doing was uh, what I started doing was I started uh, to actually check how can people find my applications. So I made this list of phrases that I thought people would would would, would look for. And what I discovered was that, well, people cannot find my app through those phrases. So, you know, my app actually cannot be found in the store. And and that made me, you know, go into the field a little bit deeper. I discovered that at the time there were no tools to, to do such a thing. So I built a simple script that just, you know, I gave a list of phrases because I'm lazy, I don't like to do things by hand. So I made a simple script that did a, a list of phrases, took a list of phrases, and it showed me positions in the store for that set of phrases that people might be searching for, right? And that was like a simple tool launched on my computer, 
And then, you know, my friends wanted to the same tool because they were also iPhone developers. They also needed that kind of thing. And, and you know, finally I said, all right, you know, let's make, uh, let, let's make a business out of it. And that's how AppCodes got created. So what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's perfect. Yeah, I, I, I love that reoccurring theme that I keep hearing on, uh, on in the shows is that, is that we built it for ourselves first and then we, we, you know, we yeah. pushed it out to everybody else. So uh, the the thing is that in case of most developers, what I discovered is that you know Apple gives you the field for your application name and the field for your keywords. You have that 100 characters, right, to put on your keywords. And what most developers do, and what I what I did as well, I just put anything you know that came to my mind in this keyword list, and then you know didn't track it, didn't take care of it, nothing. And when I discovered that the keywords actually don't work, they don't make any sense, you know, that's, that's, that was where the big revelation came from. And so the idea is that when you, when, you, when you have an application in the store, you should, for every single keyword that you have over there in the, that you gave to Apple, you should be able to say, all right, I have this keyword, this single keyword, because people search for that phrase and you know, and I'm actually visible for that keyword because if you're not visible, if you're not in, in the top one, uh, top top ten or, or, or top twenty, then you know the keyword doesn't work. You can remove it and look for for something else. Well, and, 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 yeah. and this sounds like it's very very similar to traditional SEO. Is that is that correct? No, on the on the opposite, <laughs> actually. Well, what in the traditional SEO, what you do is you. You find like the best possible phrase, right? You want to position for I don't know sex or <laughs> whatever for coffee, <laughs> and you find the so uh, you find the absolutely best possible phrase, and and then what you do is you just fight your way to the top, right? You build your links, you, uh, do whatever, so your site gets on top of the list for for, for that certain phrase, right? Now, in case of App Store SEO, well, there isn't much that you can do to fight your position way to the top. Just if you're on the bottom, you're on the bottom. You need to look for a different phrase. So the process is totally different because you, the main priority is not finding the phrases that are popular, but phrase, finding phrases that you can actually position for. So you know, finding phrases that, that, that will get, give you any chance of getting to the top 10. And you know, if your your position is low, you just look for different phrases. So you know, again, compared to the traditional SEO, traditional SEO, you fight for your phrase. You have a couple of phrases that you fight for. Over here, you just you know, you find the phrases that you can have a high position for. And that's I think that's that's like one of the main lessons that goes behind the whole SEO thing. So so then then with traditional SEO, you have all these these not only the things that you do on your site to affect. Um, to affect it, but also those, all these outside things that you can do to try to yeah. influence it. And you're saying that because it's a closed environment, you just don't have that ability with App Store stuff. Is that, is that what it was? Yeah, so that, that's, that, that's what I like actually about the App Store SEO, that there isn't too much that you can do. It's like, all right, you have 100 characters, that's it, right? You cannot, uh, there isn't much more that you can do, and you can change your name as well. But So you have this 100 characters, that's all that you can change, and that's all that matters. Uh, well, there are other factors. There are other, obviously, other factors that matter, but you cannot exactly influence them, or we don't know what they are exactly. So that's all there is. And well, the good thing, the bad thing is that you know it limits limits possibilities. But the good thing is that you know you can compare like we with the biggest f uh, firms that have the biggest SEO budgets, what, whatever, because you know it's so simple that any, anyone can do it. And the next thing is that, right, you don't need to track it like every single day. You don't need to spend all the time. You don't need this huge knowledge. You just, you know, get a couple of basics in order and that's all there is, there is to it, right? So actually my iPhone applications that I learned how to, you know, do SEO, I think, you know, right now I'm focusing on app codes. So I, I haven't updated them in a year. Right, and they still bring in this passive income from from the good positioning because the positioning once you get it, it's like usually it stays. Well, it varies varies a little bit, but it stays in a place. Okay, you don't have to fight for it every single day. <laughs> okay, okay, so that's good. So, the, so tell us how how uh, 
you know, tell us what apps code does for people. App codes does for people. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't have a screen share ready with me, unfortunately. But uh, well, that's okay. Just well, just tell us, you know, just tell us like, right, like what are yeah, what are some yeah, of the common so, mistakes that developers make, and how does app, right, app codes help? So, Right, so the first thing, uh, so AppCodes has, we call ourselves the Swiss Army knife of App Store optimization, right? So we have a couple of features, but like the main uh, main feature is this uh, this uh, search phrase tracking, right? So first thing that you do once you register, we ask you for your application ID, if you have it already, and and for the list of phrases that you want to position for. And that's that's important to know that you know it's it's phrases, not the keywords, not the one hundred characters that you have over there, but the phrases that you want to use in the you know in that people search for in the in the store, right? Okay. So you, you prepare the list of phrases that you think are quite alright, you type them into app codes and we show you, all right, for this phrase, uh, your position is high. For this phrase, your position is low, and so on and so on and so on, right? Okay. And then usually people discover that the position is low, like for all the phrases, and they need to start for looking for the new ones, right? And then on the uh, well, on the right hand of the screen that you, what you have is you have like iTunes search. It looks like iTunes search. So you can you know you brainstorm the new ideas for your phrases. And what we do is we show you uh, apps as they appear in iTunes, but we also show you like really in a very nice way, you know, how many competitors there are, what is your chance, more or less. And also for every single competitor, we give you estimates how many downloads they may have. What are, we think, their phrases, their, their words that they have. So we also try to, you know, like give you inspiration to, to find out new phrases that you wouldn't think of by looking at your competitors mostly, right? Uh, and well, you know, you brainstorm the phrases, you find out the phrases that you have a chance, so the phrases that have little competition, and based on that, you prepare a new list of these 100 keywords, right? You prepare that list, you put it to the store with, with the next update, and then after the update, you see whether those keywords, whether you were right, you know, and some of the keywords worked, some of the ones didn't, and you iterate, and after a couple of updates, you should have like a list of keywords that for every single keyword you can say, all right, I need this keyword because something, right? Because but because it gives me a position. Is that clear? Like yeah, what? yeah, yeah. So so you're doing a little bit of um, intelligence gathering on the keywords that you think you want to use, or yeah, and and then you're also doing a little bit of competitor analysis and we we call that um, discovery. In order to yeah. in order to look for opportunities that you may not have thought of, yeah. So another another side of the service is also like following the competitors. So when when you have a list of competitors, you can click follow button next to each one of them. And what we do is we look for press releases that they released because it's nice to you know to know how how competitors promote themselves in the media. Uh, and we also look for for their keywords. So on the other, like uh, in the in the other screen, we we show you like the list of keywords that your competitors have in all in one place. So you can look for the interesting picks. And we also look show you the list of words that happen in uh, the descriptions of, key, uh, of of competitors. So descriptions don't matter in App Store SEO, but you know if you see that every single competitor mentioned I don't know coffee in their description, perhaps that's a word that maybe. You know, interesting to to put into your keywords list, or perhaps that's a word that somehow matters in this area, in your area. Okay. So right. So so that's 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 the intelligence part of, of our side. Yeah. So so now you you just said that that I understand you correctly that uh, the description doesn't doesn't factor in on the ranking? no it doesn't. Well, well, when I tell anything about App Store SEO, it's like always. All right, we think it doesn't when we last checked, but Apple changes things from time to time, so I never promise people. But you know, like for the past year, or I've been uh, I've been uh, doing this, like description never mattered. So we we made tests, we removed descriptions from uh, applications, we added descriptions to the applications, and also like from from plenty of sources, unless Apple changed something within the past two weeks or month, uh, you know, descriptions don't matter. It doesn't matter. Just you know, those two. Two fields: the keywords and the application name. Yeah, a little uh, popularity of the application matters a little bit, but still we saw like little popular applications on the top and and very popular applications on the bottom. So there are some other factors, but it's definitely not description and and 
no one exactly knows so, what they, they are. Mo, you've done a quite a bit of of, <laughs> of uh, adjusting to your listing for for Space Command. So, what have you tried, and what's worked best for you? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, if you go to App Any and look at my app, uh, you see a lot of uh, updates <laughs> the last few weeks, almost once a week. Okay. Um, so, like everybody else, at the beginning, I did uh, put whatever word that thing were keyword that thing will rank. I mean, will related to my app, right? Okay. And I found out that it was maybe most of the uh, keyword were showing me around 150 to 200 in ranking. Which is basically invisible. So uh, I went and uh, and actually the first time I heard about uh, Thomas and AppCode was uh, through uh, Gabriel, which I hope is going to show up at one point. At one point, and I was listening to his uh, YouTube video, and he was talking about this AppCode, uh, and I was like, hmm, should probably try that. And eventually, when I tried it, I understood quickly that this is the problem. I was Ranking so low with my my uh, I was trying to too fast, so my first uh, keyword that I wanted to rank for was asteroids, obviously, <laughs> and asteroids took me down to like 150 or something. Uh, right now I think I'm ranking around nine because of uh, AppCode. So I did some iteration, and every time actually the kind of funny part was one day I a couple updates ago. I dumped the app on the app store on the app store or the update, and I said to myself, um, it, "It will take me about five six days to for Apple to review it, right?" Uh, no, it took I me mean, two days for that app. So that app went with that with the old keywords. I was pissed, <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, so eventually, I was looking at uh, different keywords, and I could see that some of them were okay, and some of them were not okay. So I removed them. Like Thomas said, and uh, it, and the last thing I did, and I am not proud of myself, but I actually I was not it was not my idea, but someone uh, on the uh, Facebook uh, told me about it. Was say, why not just use the, the keyword that your competitor use? I mean, the, the name of the, com the competitors. Uh, so I went for it, and I think for example, uh, if you search for Galaxy on Fire, which is a not the same app, obviously, but it's some space uh, team. I am like ranking four. And the only reason it was because I use keyword like galaxy, on, and fire. It's, it doesn't show the, the actual name. I didn't use galaxy on fire, but I, I use a couple of words like that to, to make me. Uh, uh, another word is Nova. Nova is also some space game type, right? And so. It's kind of funny because, as Thomas said, you need to use every single characters. A lot of people only use a couple of them. You have to use every single one. Even one of them will make a difference. And I give you an example. I use Nova as a. I mean, it's a space type word, right? It's not just a, an app. That there's of course the app Nova, and there's has Nova one, Nova two, Nova three. So I use the word keyword Nova, and I had like a one. Character left on my keywords on list, and I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, so I put two, the, word, the, word, the number two, and sure enough, if you search for Nova two, you get me on number four. But if you search for Nova, I'm on 150. So every character counts. Um, so far, it's hard to tell, but I can tell, can say by looking at the app any uh, ranking trends that uh, just from that last update, I doubled my uh, uh, downloads. So it's not bad. Of course, it's still low. I'm still about 100 or 150 downloads a day, but I used to be 50. So that's a kind of big jump. But I think this problem with the SEO I can see now is that it, it takes a while for you to do all this process, uh, as Thomas explained, of searching the keyword, finding it. Uh, Putting the update, and of course Apple doesn't help because it takes a week to, to get it. So it's a long process. Well, that's but eventually, like Thomas said, I, I'm hoping to find the the sweet keywords where I don't have to worry about it and I can 
go, go, go fishing. <laughs> well, I would, yeah, so uh, what we? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead. So yes. what we try to do uh, is is to make that process a little shorter because well the the last a year ago it was quite nice because the algorithm was so easy that we could actually predict what would your your position be and it was so nice because you know you didn't have to wait we just showed you right your pos you will land on top right so that's where the chance column in our uh, site still still is right now we we're not as good as that so as you notice it's like all right we we say it's 50 percent chance that you will be on top but we still try to you know give instant results showing people all right you stand absolutely no chance to to get uh, somewhere and that makes people think all right perhaps I should try something else right but yeah that's that's a challenge on the other hand it's like very stable uh, as you probably noticed right because once you get that uh, SEO it's like it's like stable it's, it it lies uh, the sales are well. You know, it gives you something as opposed to like one one time blog post, which which goes down with time, right? So, one of the yeah. one of the problem is uh, the SEO, uh, as the keyword search and set it up, is that, as you said before, this doesn't count. The ranking doesn't only is not only based on that. For instance, in my case, uh, getting the uh, the app store of the week or getting featured on uh, Apple a couple of weeks ago on the uh, hot, what's hot, probably screwed up the whole my whole technique <laughs> because now I don't know what will happen. With, what. Well, so please do not make my app any more up the week, months, or anything. <laughs> I just want to make sure that my keyword gets actually made. I think so that's the first time I've heard that. Yeah, right. Please don't, don't, please don't feature me anymore. Yeah. No more. <laughs> I Watch out! TechCrunch may write about you, and so the developer that doesn't want you know get to get. I know. You look. You start working on the keyword, and you're happy and everything, and then something happened and screwed up the whole thing. I see your so strategy your... now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't talk about me anymore. Well, at least I, hold on, hold on. At least until I get my keyword correct, and then you can talk about me all day long. So what we actually have right now in testing, uh, uh, the feature that we're launching either, either this week or the next week, is uh, that uh, we want to allow developers to ask users how did they find the application, whether it was SEO or it was, you know, like PR or, or friends or whatsoever. And, you know, then you can see that nice chart that tells you, all right, SEO is, not, you know, it, you, you had like 50% of SEO. So hopefully that will help, help your case a little bit because, you know, even if, if, if Apple features you, then you will still see that, all right, SEO is like this, this much. <laughs> well, so, I'll, I'll be interested about that. Yeah. Well, so, good. So, uh, okay, so we, we've talked a lot about the, in the App Store, um, uh, well, just just in general, how do you feel about SEO outside of outside of the App Store? Do you think do you feel like I mean, should people just solely focus on SEO inside the App Store and not really focus on any, anything outside of it? Well, we're an App Store SEO service, so definitely focus one hundred percent, you know, on that. No, just kidding. Well. Uh, to, uh, to, 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 to be honest, I don't know. I, I, I didn't see too many, too many numbers regarding, you know, like SEO outside of App Store. Mm -hmm. I know that for, for myself, when I look for an application, what I do is I don't use the Apple search. I just go onto Google and, you know, I want to find the flashlight, then I go onto Google and, and go for best flashlight apps. I find the list of flashlight apps with, with, with reviews and then I choose the ones. So, so I think you know that may be an opportunity for for SEO outside of outside of App, App Store. I, I think m more people may be doing that. Right? Do, you, do you think that they'll? Do you, do you think that the App Stores would ever take into consideration any sort of? And this is all speculative, but do, do you think that they ever take any sort of indicators, you know, social uh, linking or recommendations or, or search engine, you know, in, inbound linking or anything like that into consideration? I would bet uh, that they don't because they would need to build crawlers that can be you know treated and that's like a whole you know a huge thing to set up. Uh, my bet w is that they that they don't they wouldn't. Uh, also, what I bet is that would would be very smart for them is to track actually the conversion ratio. So you know you have like a hundred applications positioned for the flashlight phrase and then you know they see that for the application number one. From the people who click the application, like 90% got it right, and the application number two, like only 10% got uh, got the application after reviewing the description. So you know, perhaps they should move the other application lower. Do but that's something that's you know, 
uh, my bet would be that they should use some kind of a system like this. I heard that they actually might be using some kind of a system like this, but it's you know hard to say. It's it's outside of possibility to test. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, it seems like it would make sense, right? Uh, 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 how? Well, okay. The app stores are they make money when people buy things, so it would make sense that if your description is enticing or your your images are enticing that that if someone rev if someone discovers your app and then reviews it and then buys it that would be the you know that would be the one that they would want to rank well uh, yeah so I, I i would guess so that would remove like all the all the apps that you know position for things that are totally unrelated uh, to them right right so okay but, what, was, what are you saying here <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> it's, 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 it's related, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's related. Your case is totally different because you're okay. related, right? So it's, I understand. It's related. Yeah. I was talking about other cases. Well, there, there was a problem with comic applications that like spammed all the all the all the searches some time ago, and and that's gone right now. Well, because, what's interesting if you look at the history of like let's just take Google for example. If you look at the history of SEO, uh, in the very beginning, you could keyword stuff and uh, and try to get people to your site for things that were completely unrelated to whatever it was that you were you were advertising um, and of course that's not recommended and, and probably would get you kicked out of the store and stuff like that for today but uh, but to some degree that they're they're following that same model by just focusing on the keywords um, so so uh, it's got it's got to become more sophisticated at some point somehow. So uh, well, one thing is that in the past they actually uh, relied on descriptions as well, and then they changed it because people were gaming the system all the time because they were like stuffing descriptions with with all the weird keywords, right? Another thing is that they only allow to put in keywords when uh, when you update, and my guess is that you know they. They use this opportunity to make sure that it relates to things. So you know, like Mo said, Nova, Galaxy, um, it's all related to to the to the game, right? And as far as I know, they also like filter a couple of. There are certain words that they will filter out, or or the reviewers will may remove. Uh, that's that's uh, that's the observation that we had. Okay. Well, before we run out of time, I want to ask you this one last thing. You you said there that there's a a promo code dispenser. So can you tell yeah. us what that is and why it's important? That's that's especially interesting, I think, for the game developers. Uh, because, right, you launch a game, right? It costs a dollar or two dollars. And then you want to share promo codes with, I don't know, a dozen journalists. You put, want to put it on discussion groups and so on, right? But, you know, if you would put, like, a list of 10 promo codes on Reddit, that's what I used to do, or, or 20 promo codes, right? Then, first of all, you need to track which ones of them are used by people telling you, and it's, it's a pain. Otherwise, like people will try the same codes again, and they will get irritated. So that's one thing. If you put, like, if you want to share a list of twenty codes on one in in one place, then you want a special dispenser that will just give you know the code number one to the first person, the code number two to the second, and so on. Right. Another thing is that you, if you want to put uh, your promo codes on like ten discussion groups, then it's nicer to also use one dispenser because. That will, you know, you don't want to put to decide whether to give five codes to this forum, forum ten codes to another one, and so on, right? So that's that's the main benefit of the dispenser that it makes giving away promo codes much more efficient. It may it eliminates waste because every single promo code was given to a person. It's not like you published a list of ten codes on one discussion group and then no one used them. And finally, when you run out of codes, uh, in the case of our dispenser, what we do is. We ask users for email. Well, we can ask also users when, whenever they want a promo code. So it's actually a very nice way to build this, this direct contact with users because then once they give you email, then you know we can ask them, all right, what did you like about the game, whatever, right? Or you can tell them when the next batch of codes is coming, and and so it helps to build, you know, it it turns promo codes into an efficient way of gathering user contact and and you know building some kind of attraction. To your game, to your product, which I think is quite quite important at the start, right? You want to get first users, even if they don't pay, just to get feedback. What's what's up? How, how did they like the product? 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, exactly. It's all part of that marketing conversation. So that's that's good. I like that. And and those just make sure that I understand those promo codes when they're used, they then go away. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So what Apple does is Apple gives you like 50 promo codes with with, with every single update of the application, right? Mm -hmm. So ideally, you would like to give one promo code to one person, right? And you wouldn't want to waste any of the codes because you know you have only 50 of them. So you wouldn't want to put a list of. 20 promo codes on, on one, one website where no one will get them, right? right? So, yeah, once someone uses them, they are gone. Okay, good. Yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah. And, and, but, they, but, but, but they're gone from this dispenser. They're, they're gone from this list that comes off of the app. Well, app they are website. gone from the dispenser, yeah, and, and no one else could use them even if they had the code, if, if that person shared the code, right. you know. Only one person, one account can use them. So that's what Apple does. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, well, you know, this is a definitely a useful tool. Uh, if you're into App Store op optimization, you should, uh, well, which everybody one should be, uh, check out uh, App Codes, and that's uh, appcod.es, which, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, appcodes.com. We bought the domain name. Did you? We still haven't changed. Oh, all right. <laughs> <it>. Okay, ex <laughs> excellent. You can actually do it. So, so that's, that's appcodes.com? Dot com. Yeah, that's much easier. Hey. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we'll put a link to that in the description for sure. And uh, Mo, your your game is in the Apple App Store, and what's it listed under? What's the best way to find it? Um, uh, mm, that's hard. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Number two. Great. Uh, I will. I think you you can uh, find it on. Uh, Space Command, um, Missile Command, and Asteroids. Okay. Which, of course, is all the keyword I wanted to <laughs> to add. So any of those will will get you there now. Okay, and we'll and we'll, uh, we'll definitely link to it in the uh, show notes as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Well, we got one. We have one last thing that we need to do here uh, before we head out, and that is we need to pick our T-shirt winner for this week. So, uh, Ed, give me a number between <laughs> one and twenty. You know it's always pie, but uh, I'm going with not seven, not twelve, fifteen. Fifteen. All right, yeah. we're gonna go. It's Raul. Cad Cad Cadwi, Cadwi. I know. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Raul. Even I know if you I mutilated that the name, you're getting a free T-shirt. You're getting a free T-shirt. I'll send it to you. I'll email you and find out what size T-shirt you want. So congratulations. So thanks for for uh, signing up for a chance to win. So basically, what Raul did is, is he went. Uh, he found about us on Twitter. He went over and uh, if he didn't follow us already on some other social media, I would would have asked to, just to do that. Uh, but he went over and he filled out the, the, the giveaway uh, form at coronageek.com slash giveaway. So uh, that threw his name in for a chance to win a Corona Labs t-shirt, which we will send out uh, uh, as soon as possible. And uh, so if you would like to have a chance to win, all you have to do is follow us on social media. Go over to coronageek.com slash giveaway. Fill out the form. Let us know a little bit about yourself, and we will throw your name in the hat for a chance to win. It's, that, it's really that easy. Uh, and one last piece of business here is is uh, is to, a call out for topics. So if there's something that you would like to discuss on the show, uh, then I'm going to encourage you to go over to the Corona Labs website and go into the forums. There's a Corona Geek forum there, and I'll put a link to this in the show notes. But basically, if you go over and tell us what you want to talk about, uh, then we will bring that here into this this setting so that we can have a discussion about it. Mo, I know you you asked for. Um, app Store optimization. I think it's a fantastic topic. It's definitely something that's needed and something that we needed to discuss. And so, out of that, you telling us that that's what you wanted to talk about, today's conversation was born. So, uh, so basically, I want to encourage anybody who's out there who's listening, if they want to talk about app marketing or monetization or conversion tracking or, or ad network comparisons. I mean, these these are some of the topics that people have said they want to talk about. But I want you to go in and, and throw a, a thumbs up for that, you know, a plus one or whatever, and let us know that this is what you want to talk about. Because this is this is your show, and we want to talk about the things that are important to you. There. But my can, I, can I say one thing? Yeah. Can I say one thing? I forgot about it. Uh, it's a supply for the uh, Facebook app review that uh, we have on the Corona uh, forum. And I hope that everybody that's watching this will go to that and join that app review because that's the best thing on 
to be doing in marketing because they, I basically tell give you the first five reviews that you need to be on the App Store, uh, at least visible in the App Store. Yeah, my, um, I, I, last year when I was looking at it, it looks like most of the app were coming out from the Corona community with no review whatsoever, or very few. And so now you can actually get so those little boost of reviews uh, right away when you when you launch an app. Yeah, that, that's so. a that's a good point. Thank you, Mo. And and you, I know you're very active in there. Uh, you know. Uh, helping everybody else get their reviews and stuff like that and so yeah when you first get out there nobody knows you know especially if you haven't done any kind of sort of marketing or anything like that nobody really knows that, that the app is out there and uh it can be hard to get reviews and and so yeah go in there and just you know just ask for it ask for people yeah, to yeah, review yeah. your app you and, to, like, to join yeah yeah and, and and be you know and be uh it, it's a reciprocal reciprocal Re, it's a reciprocal <laughs> process you know if you uh <laughs> If if you're going to ask somebody for a review, definitely I mean, go out and give a review before you ask for a review, and let 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 people know that you're part of that community. So uh, you you get a real good response. So yeah, good suggestion, Mo. Thank you for that. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today. That's all we've got going on. So uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, Google Plus, YouTube. I mean, if you go to whatever dot com slash Corona Geek, we're there. So uh, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll be back here. Well, actually, I'll tell you what. Next week is South by Southwest. Well, actually, sorry. This week is South by Southwest. So Monday's show will not be uh, happening at its regular time. We're going to skip next week, which is March 11th, and we'll be back uh, the following week. So uh, I'll, I'll post more about that uh, on Google Plus and stuff like that in a little bit. But uh, be sure to join us week after next. Right here, Monday, 2 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. PST, 8 p.m. GMT, whatever your time zone is, we're here. So until then, happy coding.